இதுக்கு முன்னாடி ஹாய் வெல்கம் டு அவர் நியூ வீடியோ ஆன் கார்பல் டனல் சின்ட்ரோம் டியர் வியூவர்ஸ் வி நீட் யுவர் ஸ்ட்ராங் சப்போர்ட் இன் கெட்டிங் யூ நியூ வீடியோஸ் ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் சப்போர்ட் அஸ் பை சப்ஸ்கிரைபிங் அண்ட் லைக்கிங் கொரிசோ மெடிக்கல் சர்ஜிக்கல் நர்சிங் வீடியோஸ் டு கெட் ரெகுலர் அப்டேட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ கிவ் யுவர் வேல்யூபிள் சஜஷன் இன் தி கமெண்ட் பாக்ஸ் இட் ஹெல்ப் அஸ் டு இன் டெவலப்பிங் அவர் செல்ஸ் தேங்க் யூ now let's move to the topic on cts that is carpal tunnel syndrome before getting into the topic i just want to give on bit view of our anatomy of the hand bone the bones of the hand provide support and flexibility to the soft tissue they can be divided into three categories the first category is carpal bone that is proximal area a set of eight irregularly shaped bones these are located in the wrist areas the second category is metacarpals there are five metacarpals each one related to digit finally the third category is phalanges that is in the distal areas the bones of the fingers each finger has three phalanges except for the thumb finger which has two now we are going to see about carpal bones the carpal bones has the eight areas the first one is scaphoid bone then another one is lunate then third one is the trachytrum then next one is the fissiform then nearby that is trapezium next that is trapezoid next there is hapitate finally that is hamate the carpal bones are a group of eight irregularly shaped bone they are organized into two rows that is proximal and distal proximal rows consist of scaphoid lunate trachytrum and fissiform that is a sesamoid bone formed within the tendon of the flexor corpi ulnaris then another row is distal rows that it consists of trapezium trapezoid capitate and finally hamate so it has a projection on its former surface known as the hook of hamate collectively the carpal bones form on arch in the coronal plane a membranous band the flexor retinaculum spans between the medial and lateral edges of the arch forming the carpal tunnel proximally the scaphoid and lunate articulate with the radius to form the wrist joint also known as the radio carpal joint in the distal rows all of the carpal bones articulates with the metacarpals metacarpal bones the metacarpal bones articulate proximally with the carpals and distally with the proximal phalanges they are numbered and each associated with the digit metacarpal 1 that is thumb finger metacarpal 2 index finger metacarpal 3 middle finger metacarpal 4 that is ring finger and finally metacarpal 5 that is little finger each metacarpal consist of a base shaft and a head the medial and lateral surfaces of the metacarpals are concave allowing the attachment of the inner osi muscles next phalanges the phalanges are the bones of the fingers the thumb has a proximal and a distal phalanx while the rest of the digits have proximal middle and distal phalanges now carpal tunnel syndrome carpal tunnel syndrome is a common condition that causes pain numbness and tingling in the hand and arm the conditions occurs when one of the major nerves to the hand that is median now is squeezed or compressed as it travel through the wrist 
in most patient carpal tunnel syndrome gets worse over time so early diagnosis and treatments are important definitions carpal tunnel syndrome is otherwise called as median nerve compressions it occurs when the tunnel becomes narrowed or when the tissue surrounding the flexor tendons swell putting pressure on the median nerve causes and risk factors the first causes is hereditary this is likely on important factors the carpal tunnel may be smaller in some people or there may be anatomic differences that changes the amount of space for the nerve and these traits can run in families the second causes is repetitive hand use repeating the same hand and wrist motions or acting activities over a prolonged period of time may aggravate the tendons in the wrist causing swelling that puts pressure on the nerve just see the um, image that is repetitive motions that cause injury from the exercise that uh, keyboard use also then the third cause is the hand and wrist positions doing activities that involve extreme flexions or extensions of the hand and wrist for a prolonged period of time can increase the pressure on the nerve see the image top of the slide the, the how we have to use the hand in the correct positions if you are not using that positions that leads to carpal tunnel syndromes then the fourth causes is the pregnancy some of the hormonal changes during pregnancy can cause swelling then finally health conditions diabetes rheumatoid arthritis and thyroid gland imbalance are the conditions that are associated with carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms the first and foremost symptom is the numbness tingling sensation burning and painful sensations it is the primarily in the thumb finger and index finger middle and finally ring fingers then second is the occasional shock that sensation that radiate to the thumb finger and index finger middle and ring finger pain or tingling sensation that may travel up to the forearm towards the shoulder weakness and clumsiness in the hand this may make it difficult to perform fine movements such as buttoning the cloth dropping things due to weakness numbness or a loss of appropriate substance that is awareness of where your hand is in space then finally night time symptoms are very common examinations so the first examination is the history collections general health and medical history and will ask about symptoms then second one is the physical examinations in that the sign is the tunnel sign it is, that is press down or tap along the media now at inside of the wrist to see if it cause any numbness or tingling in the fingers just to see the image bend and hold the wrist in a flexed position to test for numbness or tingling in the hands that is called as the pelenges test test sensitivity in the fingertips and hands by lightly touching them with a special instrument when your eyes are closed check for weakness in the muscles around the base of the thumb look for atrophy in the muscles around the base of the thumb in severe cases these muscles may become visibly smaller test electrophysiological test it helps to measure how well the media now is working and help to determine whether there is too much pressure on the now this test will also help to determine the another now conditions such as neuropathy or other sites of now compressions that might be contributing to these symptoms electrophysiological test it may include nerve conduction studies these tests measure the signals traveling in the nerve the another test is electromyogram that is emg it measures the electrical activity in muscles and find the any nerve or muscle damage other studies include ultrasound x-rays and mri scans 
treatment there are two types of treatment that is non surgical treatment and surgical treatment first we are going to see about non surgical treatment non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs nsaids that medication such as ibuprofen and naproxen and help relieve the pain and inflammations then another treatment is steroid injections corticosteroids or cortisone is a powerful anti inflammatory agent bracing or splinting so it keeping the wrist in a straight or neutral position it reduces the pressure on the nerve in the carpal tunnel then another one is the activity changes that includes raising or lowering the chair moving the computer keyboard changing the hand or wrist positions while doing activities nerve gliding exercise surgical management the main goal of surgery is to increase the size of the tunnel in order to decrease the pressure on the nerves and tendons that pass through the space the first one is transfer corpal ligament this is done by cutting the ligament that covers the corpal tunnel at the base of the palm endoscopic corpal tunnel release in endoscopic surgery the surgeon makes one or two smaller skin incision that is called as portals and uses a miniature camera that is endoscope is to see inside of the hand and wrist a special knife is used to divide the transverse corpal ligament similar to the open corpal tunnel release procedure recovery immediately following surgery engage the patient to elevate the hand above the heart level and move fingers to reduce the swelling and prevent stiffness you should expect some pain swelling and stiffness after the procedure minor soreness in palm may last for several weeks to several months grip and pinch strength usually are written by about 2 to 3 months after surgery you may have to wear a splint or wrist brace for several weeks driving self care activities and light lifting and gripping may be permitted soon after surgery prevention it includes sleeping with your wrist held straight keeping the wrist straight when using tools avoid flexing and extending the wrist repeatedly decreasing repetitive or strong grasping with the wrist in a flexed position taking frequent rest breaks from repetitive activities performing conditioning and stretching exercise before and after activities monitoring and properly treating medical conditions linked to corpal tunnel syndrome nursing diagnosis the first and foremost nursing diagnosis is acute pain related to inflammations and swelling as evidenced by pressure on median nerve activity intolerance related to peripheral vascular dysfunction as evidenced by numbness and pain on hand then another diagnosis is a risk for infection related to surgical procedures finally disturbed sleep pattern related to swelling pain and surgical procedures as evidenced by bandaged hand nursing intervention monitor the level of the pain numbness paresthesia and functionings monitor for adverse effect of nsaid therapy especially in elderly patients ga distress or bleeding dizziness or increased serum creatinine after the surgery monitor neurovascular status of affected extremity that is pulses color swelling movement and sensation or warmth apply wrist splint so wrist is in neutral position with slight extension of wrist and slight abduction of thumb make sure that it fits correctly without constrictions administer nsaids and assist with tendon sheath injection as required apply ice or cold compress to relieve the inflammation and pain teach the patients the cause of the conditions and ways to alter activity to prevent flexion of the wrist refer to an occupational therapist as indicated advise the patients of nsaid therapy dosage schedule and potential adverse effect instruct the patients to report gi pain and bleeding 
Teach patients to gen gentle range of motion exercises. Refer to a physical therapist as indicated. References. These are all the works we have referred. Thank you for your patience listening. Thank you all.